our sacrifices, our petitions, our thanksgiving, our fastings, our watchings, they all beckon upon you. That it might please you to arise so that our enemies will be scattered. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I think, I don't know, what, what day are we on this journey? Now, I'm not counting it because I don't know when I will stop. <laughs> so welcome to day 26. You, you made it. <laughs> Please, you may be seated. <laughs> Okay, turn your Bible with me quickly to the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, beginning from verse 10. And there are times when the choir ministers and I feel the anointing upon my life. Today is one of those times there is a strong grace of God that is upon my head at this time. Isaiah, chapter 7, beginning from verse 10. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depths or in the height above. But Ahab said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Are you there? So prophet Isaiah went to Ahaz and asked him, request of God a sign from the depths beneath or from heavens above. You know, I said yesterday that a sign is, is a nonverbal communication that points to something other than itself. Whenever you see a signboard, a signboard is not pointing to itself. A signboard is pointing to something else. So is it with a spiritual sign. And many times when you are seeking the face of God, you need to be sensitive because it is possible that God might communicate with you by giving you a sign. It's, it's, you need to be very careful conscious to be able to pick up a sign that God is making available to you. Once upon a time, we finished our operations in the ministry. I've forgotten the year precisely. If Pastor Dan were here, he would have been able to tell what year it was, but I don't keep those in my brain. So we finished our operations for the year and we ended the year with a Thanksgiving feast and we rejoiced and then we shut down and asked people to go to their villages and spread the word. So right there in the admin, they switched off all the equipment and everything and they shut down the facility. Those were the days when I was still in Lagos, so I did not know much about what was going on on a day-to-day -day basis. I was able to secure per permission and I went somewhere to observe the crossover night. It's a place that they don't know me. It's a place that they are not familiar with who I was. And I did not identify myself to be a minister of the gospel. I was in the midst of the crowd seeking God desperately for my soul. And while I was there seeking God desperately for my soul in a place where I was not known, Two young ladies approached me and began to cry. C can you see a poor man? A poor man. 
just came to look for Jesus. And these ladies began to cry and fell on my feet. One held my right leg, the other one held my left leg, and they began to cry for one hour. For one solid hour, these two young ladies cried. And after crying for one hour, they left. They didn't even greet me. I went back into the congregation. Then I knew something was wrong. Because in my own mind, that was a strange sign. And I had to go decipher what that sign was about. These ladies came and cried by 4 a.m. in the morning. Are you there? And by 6 a.m. in the morning, I had a phone call, received a phone call from one of our operatives and the former venue, and they told me that the venue is on fire. The venue is on fire. And they have not been able to quench the fire. Well, they called me 45 minutes later and they said we, we, the neighbors rose up and said, our church is on fire. Meanwhile, those guys have never attended church actually. But they say our church is on fire. And they broke through the burglaries, they got into the ceiling, they put out the fire. When I was done with my prayers, I traveled back from where I was and I came and saw, glory be to God, the whole building did not catch fire. But you see, all our equipment, the keyboard, the amplifier, the mixer, everything that has to do with sound was packed into the room that was affected by the fire. And the fire melted it into liquid. My microphone, I had, you know, I've been using all kinds of stuff, but there's a microphone that was designed for me from Germany. It's a Sanhenza microphone. There's been no microphone like that. My microphone was overtaken by the flame. That was the, the burden that was upon my soul in the time. My microphone was affected. Now, if you come there, you will say, praise the Lord, the building did not burn. But those that know where to look understand that that fire incident was a sign, and I need to find out the meaning of that sign. In my mind, I was not in sin, I was not in trespass, so I don't know why a fire should come and burn the place where we have set up a prayer altar for God. The only thing we do in that place was to pray. And if anything, there should be angels standing guard to ensure that no form of damage comes to that facility. But here I was face to face with a situation that was perplexing to me, and I had to go into the presence of God because that was a sign. If you are careless, are you, oh my God, may the Lord open your eyes. Signs are littered across the pavement. Signs are littered across our nation. What we need right now are men with the spirit of wisdom like Daniel, that can interpret the sign that the, the, the hand had written on the wall, mene mene tekel ufasil. And I went into the presence of God and I told God, I'm not living in sin. Why is it that this place got burnt? And you know my mic, you know my microphone. You know the, how I like that microphone. Now, if other things got burnt, I will not be here, but my mic was consumed in that fire. And when I spoke, I wept, and I wept for days, and I wept for one week, and God did not answer me, and I kept on weeping for another couple of days, and when it was 14 days, the Lord said, rise up. You have not sinned. The only thing that you did is that you put your video on cable. You know cable? Cable network. We found a cable station somewhere in Lagos, and it was a cable station that had such a great coverage. Are you there? So if you put the message on that platform, the frequency was available all across Africa. He said, you, you, you committed no guile. 
It's just that when you put your message on the cable platform, your voice now traveled farther than your current juris jurisdiction. And the demons that came to respond to you are demons that came from where your voice went. Your voice was traveling, but you did not provide prayer infrastructure to safeguard the outcome of that mileage that your voice has been. <laughs> and then somebody will be there saying he wants his voice to travel. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is safer for you, for your voice to be in the kitchen. <laughs> if I never, if I had never had that sign, because that sign was a sign of danger, that doom was coming if I did not do something about the situation. The same way this fire came, the demons are going to regroup, and the next sound that we hear will be a sound that I may not recover from. Oh my God. The Lord himself will show thee what? A sign. You know that before it rains, you will hear things like thunder, you will hear things like storm. That's how it is. Before the real eventuality takes place, there will be many signs that will be littered across the pavement. You need to be outrightly spiritually dull for you not to be able to pick up. When unusual things happen, you want to step out of the house and then the key to your car, you can't find it. You know what? Go and sit down. Don't, don't worry, just sit down. Sit down, look for him, a hymn book, sing one hymn to the Lord. Just forget about the haste. Purge it from your heart. <laughs> you are not with me. If you travel the way I do, you will, you, will, you will be very sensitive to the signs that you pick along the road. It is very easy for you to tell that mischief has been occasioned against you. And sometimes these signs, signs are put in place by angelic personalities that exercise guardianship over your life. So signs can be spiritual. Signs can also be physical. So you will see that the prophet went to Ahaz and told him to request of God a sign as a confirmation of the things that he has said. And Ahaz said, no, I don't want to tempt the Lord in requesting from him a sign. So the prophet said, the Lord himself. God is not allergic to signs. And I'm going to show you across scripture. Anytime major things happened, God was willing to announce those things by a sign. Now turn again, just move one chapter forward move there are many dangers that can be averted if we have the capacity to read the signs that are littered around us which is suggestive of the fact that there is something that is about to break forth before you experience a breakthrough in the natural your spirit will there is there is a sensation like a honeycomb that your spirit will begin to experience a sweetness that you cannot explain Something beyond words that your spirit will begin to enjoy. Those are spiritual signs. And I don't want to go into the spiritual signs. Because you will say we can't see it. We can't touch it. Let me dwell on the physical ones. Are you still with me? An angel came to Mary and told Mary, Blessed art thou amongst women. Thou art highly favored, O Mary. And it, the angel unveiled the counsel of God. And Mary asked the question. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Mary asked the question. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? What is the mechanism? by which these things would take place because the normal biological protocol is not in play. What was the answer? The spirit of the Lord shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Do you still remember the case of 
Zechariah that went to carry out his priestly service in the temple and then angel Gabriel was standing by the altar of incense. Now the question is why was it the altar of incense that angel Gabriel was standing beside? Because in the holy place we had three pieces of furniture. We had the seven golden candlesticks, the menorah. We had the table of shoe bread. And then we had the brazen altar. Why was it by the side of the brazen altar that Gabriel was standing? That's not the only furniture in that place, in that vicinity. But it happens to be that the brazen altar is a picture of the place where sacrifice, brazen, brass, brass means judgment. Are you there with me? Uh -huh. So the brazen altar is actually a picture of Calvary. And Calvary is the biggest work of priesthood that God set up upon the face of the earth in order to redeem his counsel. You know, his counsel was no longer going to come to pass on the account of the error of Adam. So God himself sponsored an altar in the earth and it was on the basis of that altar that was set up in the earth that his own grand eternal plan can find expression upon the face of the earth. He will have the opportunity to be able to conquer the hearts of humankind again. And there will be sons and daughters that are loyal to his kingdom who will be given the wisdom to implement his program upon the face of the earth. Now, the, the brazen altar, the brazen altar there is symbolic of Calvary. And that is the sum total of the instrument that is set up to satisfy the claims of divine justice. It was at the side of that altar that the angel was standing, angel Gabriel. And angel Gabriel began to tell him how that his prayers have ascended to heaven, his prayers have been heard, and his wife will surely give birth to his son. Notice what, notice what Zechariah asked the angel. Okay. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled. Luke chapter 1 verse 12, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall return to the Lord their God. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, whereby shall I know thee? What's the meaning of that question? He said, whereby shall I know this? He said, what sign will you give to me? What supernatural sign? What sign that is not man-made will you give me now that will become a proof that these things that you have said will come to pass? It was an angel. The, the man, are you there? Was frightened at his countenance when he beheld him. But he was not frightened to ask him, produce a sign. If it's you and they come and tell you that you will have a son, you will say, Amen. The man did not say, Amen. The man said, What? <laughs> He's been looking for a child. No, I know. This news is good news, but what sign do you give? 
I don't know Zachariah's experience. Maybe some other people came to prophesy to him before. And it did not come to pass. So he was not excited. He didn't sound excited here. He, no, he didn't sound excited. It was more like, I, 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 I need proof. This kind of thing, people say it in the market. So what sign will you give me? As a sign that no human being can replicate as proof that this your words will come to pass. Then that was when the angel introduced himself to him. He said, I am Gabriel. Notice that the angel did not travel to heaven to take permission to do the other th the things that he did eventually. He introduced himself to him as Gabriel, that angel that stands before the presence of the Lord, and the sign he gave Zechariah was that you are going to be done. And he made Zechariah done without taking permission from God in the heaven, because Zechariah requested for what? The sign. Many times when spiritual things unfold, what God does is that he precipitates the sign. Most times we are too hasty to observe that the entire corridor is littered with signs. When I begin to seek God, I become extra sensitive, not just spiritually, but physically. And any unusual thing that happens around me, I stop to inquire, why this? If you are not an inquisitive person, you are going to miss God a thousand times. Do you still remember the scripture we read in the book of Isaiah? I know you have forgotten, but I wanted to draw your attention to one of the things that, even if you are blind, please see this one. I want to show you something. By the time we finish analyzing it, you will find out that most of you are still blind, even though God came to give you sight. Are you there? Okay. Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. This is the response from the prophet. And the prophet said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. If my understanding of this scripture is accurate, it means that every child you got from the Lord actually is a sign. It's pointing to something. If you were not careful enough to know what each and every child you give birth to is pointing to then you are so blind even if an iroko tree falls and breaks your car you will not you, you will not be moved you will not know that it's unusual so normally when god are you there if you if you if i can give you a full chronicle of the meaning the signs that all my children pointed to a full Chronicle. And I was challenging Chief Don the other day. I said, do you know the sign that God brought into your household when he gave you your children? Most of you came here to give testimonies that you now have children and you don't know the sign, what they are pointing to. Now, the average believer is a prophetic illiterate. He cannot interpret the things that are written in, in capital letters around his life to draw his attention to what God is doing. Isaiah chapter 8. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take a great roll and write in it. With a man's pen concerning Mahashalal Hashbaz, and I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jebrekiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare son. 
Then said the Lord unto me, Call his name Mahashalal Hashbaz. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. So that child that was born was a prophetic sign. The growth of the child and the development of the child's auditory powers was going to coincide with a mighty political event in the time. There was going to be an invasion from the king of Assyria and he's going to cut away the riches of Damascus. He said, before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father, my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Now, so it is prophetic for God. In fact, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Do you still remember Isaiah chapter 8? I think we are still in Isaiah chapter 8. All right. I will, I will take you further. Every child is pointing to something. Every child that God allows to come from eternity to time is a messenger that is pointing to a certain season in your life, just in case you are the parent of that child. If you don't, if you miss, because the thing about spiritual seasons is that if you cannot discern them, you will miss the grace that comes on those seasons. Just like Jesus was to be born in a generation. And the Bible says that he came to his own and his own received him not. A mighty move of God was missed. That was a move that was announced by a star that wandered out of the regions of Babylon and people navigated from Babylon to Jerusalem under the guidance of the star as, as a compass. The people that saw the star were unbelievers, were astrologers. And they came to the people that were custodians of the revelatory powers of God to ask for direction. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship. The people that saw the star were unbelievers. Those people traveled. They were shopping for answers. The people that they got the answers from were custodian of the revelatory powers. They did not join them in the quest. Because even if, you, even if the sun falls, Christians will still come to church and say, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. At what point will God catch your attention? He said, before the child should have knowledge to cry, the child was a prophetic sign. And the child was pointing to the times and the seasons for whence the king of Assyria will invade Damascus and Amen. And his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He did many good things, raised the dead. Heal the sick. That's not why he came. He came to save his people from their sins. The reason why he came is not anything he did before the cross. Are you, are you following me? It's not anything he did before the cross. He shall save his people from their sins. So if you want to understand the ministry of Jesus... And the reason why Satan came to attack him, the critical point where Satan showed up to oppose Jesus, it is linked to his purpose, not linked to miracles. His purpose was to go to the cross, and the reason why Satan came to meet him in the wilderness to tempt him was to negotiate the cross. And it's possible for you to accomplish what you want without having to go to the cross. 
He said, all this glory on earth, it has been delivered unto me. We can negotiate. You don't need to. It doesn't need to be the way you want it to be. You know? We can just, then two men can discuss, and I turn the powers over to you, and there'll be no need for you to put yourself in harm's way. You know, we can talk about this. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You will never know, that is, for those of you that are here, you will never, if you don't know your purpose, you cannot even understand your warfare. You don't understand your warfare. There's no context in which we can situate your warfare. You can't explain why the devil has time to come into your space for this kind of discussion. You cannot explain it because you don't have a context, there's no reference point. These wise men saw a sign of the star of a king in the heavenlies. They were not prophets. They were scientists. And in their calculations, they saw that in the history of mankind, it is only once that the star of the king will appear. And since it has appeared in their generation, according to the studies of astrology, they want to find who's the king behind this sign. That was the reason why they traveled. When they came into Jerusalem, the people that gave them the answer to their puzzle, those people were not willing to travel. Are you seeing this too? It's very easy to miss the signs of God. Very easy to miss the signs of God. There's a statement God made here, Jesus made in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, beginning from verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the, in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the time. Jesus is saying, the same way you, you discern the face of the sky is the same way if you have the skill, the experience, to be able to discern the face of the sky, it is it's the same kind of craft in discerning the signs of the times. So Jesus is saying, when things, when seasons, spiritual seasons are about to be bettered, these seasons litter the realm of the spirit with sufficient signs that wise men can stumble upon and interpret what is about to come. Are you there? Um, when last were you hungry? Okay, you're hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> when a man is hungry, his body begins to give sign. His body begins to communicate. And the communication of your body in times of hunger, it's different from how your body communicates in times of thirst. The different sign. You there? When a woman produces eggs in her ovaries, I don't. I'm not a woman, so maybe a woman will help us. If you are alive, except you have, you are in a trance. If you are alive, you should know that eggs have been produced. Am I, am I speaking? Everything that has to do with the processes of life are always administered with sign. Are you there? Always administered with sign. You know the signs that manifest in the sky that is suggestive of the fact that rainy season is about to come. And if you see those signs and you don't applying wisdom, one of those days you come home drenched in the rain because you did not have the wisdom to secure an umbrella. <laughs> you did not respond according to wisdom in the light, in the face. 
of the signs that are bound. So there is no spiritual thing that happens suddenly. If you are a watchman, are you there in the spirit? No surprise is supposed to break upon you suddenly. If a surprise breaks upon you suddenly as a spiritual man, you need to go back into your closet and repent. There is a gap in your intimacy with God. Nothing, no major thing happens without a sign. Without a sign. So when you begin to offer up sacrifices and you begin to stir up the spirit realm, you must be equipped with the kind of patience that it takes for you to begin able to read the signs around. One of our pastors in one of the nations, he held a 10-hour intercessory prayer. And instead of a breakthrough, after the 10 hours intercessory prayer, Satan struck. He struck plenty of the members. And he cried out to me on the phone. Strange things are happening here after our prayer. He said, this is an indication of the fact that, you know, you've been doing 10 hour prayers all this while and you've been dancing. But your effort now has affected the base of the spiritual entity that is in your city. So the spiritual entity just is just saying, we have finally made contact. That's the interpretation of all these reactions that you have seen. And the way to cure it is kindle the flame again. How do you cure it? I know some of you came for night vigil and then when you went back, you saw one beast like this. Since that day, you have not returned for night vision. Because you made that beast stronger than God. That is that beast that teaches God how to be God. You escaped. And you have not returned for night vision ever since. The way to do it is what? Kindle the flame again. Let the demons know that you are not going to back out. Demons don't give up easily. They, they've worked with men for many years and they have wearied many men by their consistency. So the way to endurance means to outlast the devil. You need to show certain signs that it is not in my nature to back out. You've just met the wrong man. Yes, the way I do my things is that when I focus, I don't retreat, I don't surrender. In the armor of God, we have a helmet. For the you know, he said, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are what the issues of life. The issues of life. So, every organ that has to do with the issues of life, and I don't want to go into the Hebrew, I don't want to read that scripture in the Hebrew, it has a different meaning from what you think it means in the Hebrew. The helmet. Protects, you know, protects the skull. The skull is the house for the brain. Can you, can you see that every organ that has to do with life, even God himself made bones to keep it, knows that your brain is important, so he made the skull for it. He knows that your lungs and your heart are so important, so he made the rib cage for it. He knows that your spinal cord is important. What did he make for it? He made the, the, the vertebral column to protect your spinal cord. For out of it, a what? In the armor of God, there's a helmet for the head. There's a breastplate of righteousness for the chest region. There's a gospel boot. Someone that is moving with the frequency of urgency that the Holy Spirit sustains about kingdom matters upon the face of the earth. And there is no apparatus that is designed to protect the back. That means the soldier of God must not know retreat and he must not know surrender. So when you step out and Satan shows up, oh my God, you, you must prove a point to Satan. God already knows the answer, but Satan is not aware. Satan is not aware that you will not back out. Oh Jesus Christ. 
So when you see the turbulence occasioned by the prayer, it means you, you just told Satan, Salam Aleikum. There was an unfortunate situation one of those days when I was transferred to Lagos. We had to stay in a block of flats in a place called Games Village, Lagos, in Surulere. Body Thomas, for those of you that is still there, it's not a spiritual place, it's a physical place. And uh, we have block of flats, two bedroom flats, one, two, three, four floors. Four floors this way, one wing. Four floors this way, one wing. So one block has one, two, three, four, five. Eh? One, two, three, 20. 20. One block has 22 bedroom flat. And I was in flat number 13. All, the whole of Nigeria was in that block. When, what I mean by that is, oh, if you don't know what an altar is, stay in a block of flats where Nigerians are. Some people from the north, they will bring their basin from the north. Huh. The one that they check in the night to see. My Castillo, Korea, Mande, Koromo. Then the one that is under my own flat, that one, he burns incense. When the spirits, <laughs> in the night, you just, there's this, a strange scent, and that scent comes with demons. Where is Christopher? Christopher Awani. Are you here? Yeah, so those days, when I was in Lagos, you know, my wife was here, so I don't stay alone. I've, the house is filled with brethren, so that you can, you yourself can be accountable. If you like righteousness, you will have wisdom on how to survive. It's a man that wants to iniquity, that will create an atmosphere, pray about sin, and perform it. He will pray. <laughs> he, will create, he will create circumstances conducive to it. He won't pray about it before he will perform. Choke the place with people so that even if you are backsliding in your mind, when you see them, you will correct your Yes. So, Awani was one of the people that stayed with me in Lagos. Incense, 2 a.m., that's when the incense will. If you are, your destiny will never wake up if you don't know how to set up an altar in that block of life. People that came from Delta, they came with their stone. <laughs> people that came from the north, they came with spirits from the desert. The place had no security, but every man's goods were kept in safety. May the Lord give you understanding about this. <laughs> May the Lord open your eyes to know what I'm talking about. So we knew that the only way to survive here, in fact, for six months, I, I lost my spirit. I couldn't find the location, of the address of my spirit. I lost it. Because the A. Hey, Please help me to give your neighbor wisdom. Don't move to Lagos in a hurry. <laughs> ah, six months I couldn't find my spirit. There was no, no, no prompting, no nudging from the Holy Ghost. I knew I was, I was in trouble. So I took a fast. You see, you don't need to only fast when the church says fast. When you notice there's an emergency, you cannot pick the radar again. No signs. You've missed your signs. You need to stop it. Starve your flesh and stop your spirit until you begin to hear and you have found the center of gravity that supports your spiritual life. As powerful as I was as an intercessor, as powerful, all the revelations and the encounters I had, I did not have it in that house. It's when I go out and enter buses to go to work. But by the time I come into that place, <laughs> 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 
you will need to know how to dig the spiritual borehole to, <laughs> to survive in that. May God give you understanding of what I'm talking about. Ministers of the gospel, you, you run away easily. No. Satan is everywhere. That place you want to run to. The, the spirits there, they dance on one leg. They, you are... <laughs> Go there and dig a borehole. Dig deep, so deep, beyond the reach of the controlling powers. There's a place like that. Let your life source stem from the depths. I was in that house for seven years. It took me four years to penetrate the environment. And I was in fasting. You know what I told Satan? No retreat. No sir. I invited the minister of the gospel to preach here. So I went to the airport and picked him up. So we, we left the airport, went to his hotel room, dropped him. Then the security people went and brought him. We were waiting for him outside. When he came into, when he even came into the environment, he did like that. He finished preaching and he called me and said, what did you people do here? I said, we went deep. He said, it's only a borehole that can produce. <laughs> that he knows this town. He's been preaching here for a long time. The Satan locked it up and put the keys on his dining table. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor, we need to go deeper. Are you still there? The man was the one that asked the angel to show a sign. The angel now made him. All right, I want to stop here. We'll continue. But I want to attend to some questions. We got some questions from our participants online. Maybe some of the questions will be addressing some of the issues upon your heart already. So we'll just look at it and we'll deal with it. So this question is from Ugochuku Okoye. He's in San Francisco, California. He said, how can one break free from the influence of spirits or deities that one was dedicated to as a child or an infant? This is the four-way formula. First of all, you need to repent of the iniquity that was practiced in your household. Repentance. If you begin to read the New Testament with enlightenment, you will find out that in relation to the kingdom of God, because it was the message of the kingdom that Jesus preached, so the first kingdom message was that which was preached by John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In order for us to be fully partakers of the uh, dynamics of the kingdom of heaven that God is offering us, the requirement among humankind is to repent from their ways. So the first thing that you will need to do if you are turning your back on the priesthood and the attendant damnation that that priesthood brings among the people is to advance the cause of repentance. And the repentance is not individual. The repentance is a corporate kind of repentance. You are repenting on behalf of your family, of your kindred, of your clan. In this particular regard, the intercessor cannot separate his own sin from the sin of the community. He includes himself as a sinner along with the community that is guilty of the crimes for which God is administering judgment. Are you there? This is what it means to stand in the gap. There's an elaborate protocol of repentance that you need to cut. In fact, as you, are you there? As you begin to advance this re repentance protocol, and you begin to advance, don't, don't do it like a formula. 
You just come and say, Lord, I repent. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hosanna. The demons will arise and trace you. You are going to repent profusely. And this repentance is going to reach ahead the moment it, there is evidence that you are doing it with all of your heart. So what I mean is that it might take some time for you to arrive at that point where your entire heart is in the process of seeking repentance. It might take you weeks. It might even take you months. It might take you years. Depending on the level of involvement as the case may be. And in this matter, you don't stop repenting until God tells you, I'm satisfied. Don't go there with your faith orientation where you declare and clear and you name and claim. Are you aware that the scripture says that God is the one that will teach our fingers to fight and our hands to war? It means you don't know how to fight. You don't know how to war. It is the spirit of God that's going to teach you how to fight. The spirit of God is going to teach you how to war. So you begin to advance repentance. Advance repentance. Advance. The one I did for my family while I was doing my youth service, there was a place I was going to pray, and for eight months, I was bringing repentance for my family. Eight months. After eight months, then I began to receive signals that the appeasement has reached a head. And that's the reason why I had to teach us about spiritual signs, because when you begin to advance a certain protocol in your priesthood, in the realm of the spirit, and to trouble the realm with your desires, if what you are advancing is achieved, then God will begin to release signs to show that, okay, okay, it's all right. We can move on to the next point. So the first point is repentance. The second point is confession. For In order for this confession to be of any force whatsoever, you will need to have a little history of your family. To know the kind of iniquity that was practiced in your family. I went to Brazil to minister, and when I got to Brazil, this guy, the guy was 54 years at the time. He was 54 years at the time, and I believe I was 30-something years at the time. So the prophetic anointing came upon me, and I, I could, it was quite sharp. I could tell people one or two things and all of that, and he did not believe what I was doing. He felt I was just using psychology, so he asked the pastor, to have a one-on-one -on -one moment with me and the pastor that invited me said can you can you see this brother i said okay no problem so he stood and he was watching me and i told him i said lord can you reveal something that this man will know that i know you reveal something instantly i was in a vision and i saw him somewhere in eastern nigeria and his father killed a human being, and he was observing, and they buried that human being in order to produce wealth in their family. Instead of wealth, they, they abject poverty. They ran abroad to look for greener pasture. It was drought that they ran into. I told him, you were there when the person was killed, your father killed. He broke down. He never repented. He only ran from home and escaped to Brazil and started a church. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The, that altar, <laughs> you are not, you are not following. The, the altar wasted his life. You know Satan? Satan can waste life. Huh. Because for many of us, you think that if you ignore the mountain, the mountain doesn't exist. That was what the pastor came to preach to us in a certain summit. We, we, we came for a minister's conference, and then this man now came and said, let all of us agree that Satan does not exist, and he will not exist to us. I, I took my Bible and left. 
these people have time to waste. It is rubbish. These people, so this is, it was an abomination for a conference like that to be put on. Let us agree, me and you, we agree. Because faith, you know, your definition of faith is that it gives you the impetus to ignore the mountain. Faith does not ignore. Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say unto this mountain. Faith is acknowledges mountain. That human, that altar of the human sacrifice wasted his destiny. At 54, he was a, he was like the altar of confusion. The way to do it is not to run to America. Because by the time you go to America, the demons that your ancestors partnered with, they will give a handshake to the witches of California. And those witches will also administer their priesthood and send the demons of California to administer the judgment that is due for you. Have you seen, the, the scriptures say, I have seen an evil under the sun. Except you can dive and begin to walk on top of the sun. If you are under, <laughs> the same symptoms will find expression. People thought that when they escape to Italy, the symptoms will change. Wake up. You need to pour out repentance. And when you are pouring out that repentance, you must mention at least a few of the perverse things that were done in that conference and seek and confess it. If it's not confessed, it will not be pardoned. That's the work of a priest. It, he investigates the departures that have taken place. How many of you still remember Job? That Job offered up sacrifices on behalf of his children and what did he say? May peradventure they might have done some wrong or cursed God in their heart. He was doing that as the portion of his own priesthood so that the presence of God will remain over his household. So when you confess, then there's what, something we call the law of detachment. You will detach yourself completely from the sin that your family is associated with. Also detach yourself from the prosperity that comes through that altar. Now, some of you want to eat. You want to eat. The altar is... You are not following me. You are not following. You are, following. are you there? Yes. You know that they poured blood on that altar, that this wealth is coming out of human sacrifice. Go and suffer. Separate your own life from the prosperity of that altar that is serviced by blood. There was someone among us here that was a very powerful vessel of God. Exceedingly powerful vessel of God. And the person was in a situation and death was coming to take the person. I traveled to where the person was. And I knelt before God and say, author of life. This one has honored me. You sent me. Not so many people get to honor those that are sent. This one has honored me. Can I beg for the life? And the great one did not answer me. And, and the great one answers me. He answers me. Yes, I am his friend. Yes, a good friend of his. Such that if I weep now, if I cry now, he will come. I can make him come. Once he touches my heart, he will come. For the first time, I was faced with a situation where the great one did not come. The person died. So he pained me, and when the pain went down, I went back to him and said, Oh, great one, now I want to learn. Why did this person die? He didn't answer for a long time. And after a long time, when I stopped asking, one morning he told me that that person that I was praying for had eaten from the wealth that came from the demonic altar that 
he himself wants to destroy. There was no way I could, there was no argument I could bring on the table that could justify that the person ate from the altar of devils. If you know you are dealing with demonic issues, then you must apply the law of detachment. I will not be a partaker of the sin that is in that place, and I will not be a partaker of his prosperity. The Bible says that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. If she, if he had decided to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, there were some, there were some, there were some pleasantries, there were some things that he would be entitled to. He did not, he detached himself from that entitlement. Are you there? And if you look at him, he's saying, Jew guy, Jew guy, Jew guy, you are a Jew. But he detached himself from every form of advantage that he will have because he was designated as the son of Pharaoh's what? Daughter. The Bible says that he was more excited to be associated with the reproaches of Christ. If you don't exercise detachment, you are going to come under the same intensity of judgment that will flood that your family. Detachment. There were relatives of ours that went to meet with the necromancers. Those ones that consult with the spirits of the dead that dwell at the city steps. And the very good necromancers don't even mingle with humankind. Those are the ones that have the ability to control nature. And they can send thunder from their cover to kill someone. They are assassins in the spirit. They can send lightning. Have you ever seen lightning flying, looking for someone's head? Those guys are skilled in doing it. So, some of our relatives went and secured their blessing. And those blessings that were secured was with a lot of negotiation, transaction, the kingdom of darkness. I didn't need too much spiritual understanding to know that I had to detach myself. For detaching myself, I suffered for 12 years. I suffered for 12 years for this detachment. And people were saying, ah, God has raised somebody. He has raised, why will we not rally around the person? That's how you trade the destiny of your children. I detached myself in the wilderness and I acquainted myself with fasting and with prayer. On the 13th of January, 2003, God sent me an angel by 10 p.m. in the night to give me the direction that led to this ministry. The reason why God could walk with me was because I was willing not to walk with the darkness and to even benefit from what comes out of the spring of that well. You want to eat on, on the table of demons and also eat on the table of the law. You will be struck. Many people that talk about being liberated from demonic influences are not willing to pay the price of detachment. Oh, just like someone that's a prostitute. Then you give your life to Christ. And you say, how will I die of hunger? The moment you turn your back on that sin, that's when God will open the door of your flourishing. If you are not willing, if you are emotionally attached to it, you will never see salvation. And in the fullness of time, when your cup is full, ah, walk away! Walk away gallantly. Any man that makes up his mind that I'm willing to suffer, God will, will, will deliver him. But anyone standing and saying, I will suffer, I will run away from me, he cannot even be trusted. Because he doesn't have a God. Detachment. Please, you know you are quiet now. <clears throat> hey. 
I'm called to, to preach the truth, even if it will affect me, even if me too I will be injured. Oh, you don't know that me too, I'm also getting injured by preaching the truth to you. I've spoken to you about holiness. It means that I, it's no longer an option for me. You want to walk holy as a preacher? Preach it. Preach holiness. Preach it loud. The day you realize, ah, you have gone too far. You can't even. It will help you. Your soul will be delivered. When you find a preacher very scary, doesn't want to touch issues of holiness, I know where you've been to. <laughs> you know I'm long in this job. I'm long here. And why you say, you know, it's this kind of thing. The Lord will help us. Ah, you have been to Calabar. You have been there. There's a hotel called Gomez, Gomez Plaza. You have, you have been there. You have been there. You have been to Gomez. May the Lord give you understanding. So you must exercise detachment. I labored in the wilderness for 12 years. That was how they took my name to the village and said it's a useless man. He will never amount to anything. See the way that his, his mates are doing this, his mates are doing that. He is there clapping hands in church. Today, the, the man that claps hands in church is shining on the mountain. Yes, he's shining. Is shining on the mountain top, and the people that spoke evil about me, they are so ashamed that they cannot even come to church. Yeah. Because when it became clear that this man has the solution, but because they have spoken about me in public and they do not hide their feelings, it's, it's, a, it's a body. The other day, I saw one text message. They said, oh, This person is sick. Can you come on? Oh, no, 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 no. You, I have knowledge that you used to go to Herbalist to, for healing. You to bring the sick here. The fact that we are relatives doesn't, the protocol is the same. If you had money to transport this man, and they even took one of them to a mountain, this is not a mountain, this is easier. Transport, bring him here. And the God that we serve will, will wake him up. You will make an effort so that Jesus, you must respect Jesus. Even more than you respect all those people. Jesus is not free. If the salvation we have, he is, is, we, we got it free, but it cost Jesus his life. It cost him his life. The man clapping hands has found light. Yes. Hallelujah. And you know what? All the people that went for darkness, their candle light was put out. Not in another generation, before our very eyes. So even the devil that they work for, the devil did not pay salaries. Hi, Jesus Christ. I am, I am, I am crucified with Christ. <laughs> the name of Jesus. You need to be, you need to have mental sickness for you to say you want to serve the devil. You come there, they say, kneel down. You need. Ah. My cousin went somewhere and saw one of my, my relatives kneeling down. Big man kneeling down in a shrine like this. <laughs> you must come here. You two come. I have not knelt down before any altar. The altar I kneel before and I weep before is Jesus. Jesus. Please help me preach your neighbor. Walk away from that darkness. Walk away. So the principle of detachment is critical. And then finally, after you have exercised detachment, then you now have the authority to expel the demons that watch over the council of darkness to perform it. Your life of detachment is the authority that you have secured to become a priest that can introduce a new spiritual order, that can sanitize the entire environment from the infiltration of the kingdom of darkness. Oh, a scripture is calling me, but it's not for today. I want to do that scripture next week so that you can see it very well. It's calling. I refuse to yield to it. So we have somebody else, Claire, Claire Luther. How long between the destruction of an altar 
and the manifest, manifestation of the effects of the new altar that speaks of better things. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And all his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Can we do the victor song again? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. The moment the spiritual entity, the supervising spirit of the demonic altar is cast out, a new regime finds expression. It's in, it is very instant. Sometimes, sometimes in few days, you see a new climate altogether, new possibilities. That employment that has been kept bound for 12 years, in, in three weeks, you just see three doors just open. Now it's come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren has been cast out and accuses them before God day and night. Can you see how determined the devil is? I think we need to do a refresher course on accusation so that we show you the politics of the heavenly realms. And how to dispossess Satan of his voice. Oh, now is come salvation. Now is come strength. The kingdom of our God. The power of his might. An altar institutionalizes a scene in the camp. That scene can be alcoholism. That scene can be womanizing fornication. That scene can be adultery. That scene can be theft. That scene can be murder. And he uses that scene to legitimize itself across generations. When the generation of priesthood arises, they detach themselves from that scene. Are you there? Especially if the altar is an altar of necromancy, something like a leku. The first thing you need to do is detach yourself from sexual immorality. You will see how powerless that altar is against your life. Detach yourself from the sin that travels, that is customary among the clan and the culture. Make up your mind. I'm a new breed without greed. I'm a radical opposition against unrighteousness. I'm a man that fears God. I'm a man that hates sin. I'm a man that is presenting his soul to be a platform for the Lord to set his foot so that he can begin to bring judgment, justice, and equity into the landscape. I want to be a foundation that the Lord will stand upon. I've, this thing I'm saying now, I've been saying it for many years until we began to see the influence of those dark forces began to recede. And the people that were supposed to inherit the witchcraft that people set up many years ago, they began to inherit tongues. Kaporo. <laughs> the witches did not have people to inherit them. Inherit their shrine. Inherit their altar. Because salvation broke out like a plague. Are you there? 
you can make a difference. You can make a difference. What God seeks is just one man that will stand in the gap. This is the victor song. Now is come. Salvation. And what? And strength. If you tarry long, you will sing this song. Yes, it will be your testimony. Now is come. Salvation. And strength. The kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. That's what happens when a righteous altar is set up. Then the kingdom of God begins to find expression. Oh my God. That's when you will discover that it was actually a family of evangelists. Because the kingdom of God began to unravel his secret plans concerning everyone that was in the realm. You begin to see the passion for God begins to intensify. The grace of God becomes strong on the lives of men. And then you see the beauty that God wanted to weave out before darkness came and interrupted. May you be that priest that will sing the victor song. Now is come. Before this time we could not sing, but now we sing salvation and strength. The kingdom of our God, the power of his God. The power. The power. The power. The power. The power. I want to provoke you to push down something right now. That altar that have been standing for a long time. Many men have died. You've gone for burial after burial. You've gone for way keep after way keep. No celebration in the entire family. The only thing is one morning here. Somebody died there. Somebody was killed here. An accident took place here. Someone needs to pay bills in the hospital. Oh my God, something is speaking. Something is speaking. Something is speaking. But when you push out this accuser, when you push him out, then a new regime finds expression. You will be that one to sing the victor song. Now is come salvation and strength. The kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ. Can you push it out? We seek priests, men that will set up the technology that will bring in the kingdom. We seek priests, men of capacity. Men that will not retreat. Men that will not surrender. Now is come salvation. Salvation must come. The kingdom of our God and the power of his mind. Oh, you can rebel against the devil. You can stand against the wickedness. The wickedness that has plundered. The wickedness that has taken lives. Ay, 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 ay. Oh. Hey! 
Ela vai lá, 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 